All right, we're here at, uh, well, this place is crazy, and you're about to see why. Um, I'm here with Rich, um, and Rich is, uh, he, well, I'm going to let Rich tell you exactly what this place is and, and what he does. Okay. How you doing? I'm Big Rich. This is my fish rescue. We save and, and rescue fish that grow too big for your tanks that the pet store shouldn't sell. Red tail cats, pakus, iridescent sharks. They're very cute this big, but they can grow up to four foot, five foot, and then there's nobody out there equipped to take them. And the, the pet stores, they, they, they're not equipped. And uh, the zoos and the uh, aquariums around town that used to take them, no longer take them no more. So these fish are basically sentenced to death, eventually. So what I did was I started, I started with a 10 gallon tank and I wanted bigger. So I've, I've finagled my way into some big tanks, so now I can save these big fish. Come on into my fish room. This here is our first tank. This, me and my son Joshua built, and it's 3,000 gallons. Um, it's got an 11 foot window, it's 16 foot long, six and a half foot deep, and 44 inches high. And we've got some, here, here's a, a hybrid between a red tail cat and a tiger shovel nose. There's red tail cats down here. There's iridescent sharks, pakus. Uh, there's a, a, a tiger shovel nose. Um, we just filled it with water and moved the fish in. That's why you see some of these fish have uh, their fins are a little bit messed up. They got hurt in the transport from the other tanks. So it, it's going to take a month and two before all that grows out and they'll start looking good again. And uh, you know, we're just trying to make room for more fish. Over here, now this is our uh, 450 gallon, it's a Dutch aquarium system, uh, DAS tank. It got donated to us from Aquarium Authority when they closed down, and we use this for our hospital tank. All the new fish come in, because all my tanks are all in one system, I can't have it take over everything and then treat 17,000 gallons of water. So we put them in the quarantine tank for a month, treat them with all kinds of medicine, uh, there's a new guy right here, a greater siren. Uh, he's got two front legs, no hind legs, and he's, he's more of an eel than he is a salamander. But, uh, you know, the newer fish going here, there's some stingrays. Over here, this is the dog bone. I bought it at an auction when Aquarium Authority closed down on Ridge Road. Uh, this here I fill with fish that I can give away. Because we take in fish for people, and like if you have your son, Little Joey names the fish, you know, Spot or, or uh, Bug Bug. <laughs> Whatever he names it, if you donate that fish to us, we now, because it has a name, we keep that fish forever and give it a forever home. And you can come back and visit your fish anytime. But this here is fish like a guy's house caught on fire and he called us, please come save these fish, take them. I don't have no place to put them. We can find them other homes. These are on the smaller scale that we can give out to people and find them homes. So that's what this tank's about. Come on this way. This is our our thousand gallon. This was way back at my last house. This was my to end all tank. I bought it for myself. I wanted it. I was just into fish keeping at the time. This is going to be my biggest tank ever. I love it. I bought it from a, a place that was closing down and got a good deal on it, $4,500, brand new aquarium. Uh, they delivered it, uh, semi come up, and this was my tank. But you know, now that I'm here at this house, we have up upgraded and now we started the rescue. But this is basically an eclectic, a bunch of fish together that you wouldn't think could fit there, you know? There, there's South American cichlids, there's, there's uh, arrow, African arowanas, you got angelfish, you got a fly river turtle, you got a dorado out of the Amazon River. Um, there's a bunch of clown loaches and flag tails. And look at the size of these uh, ballast sharks. They're, I've never seen any that big, but they're old. Um, come on this way. And, and don't get on me for my uh, saltwater decor, but I happen to have them laying around. I got in a deal at an auction once. And I didn't, I don't have to go and buy driftwood for decorations. I had these laying around. So I do have a saltwater, freshwater, <laughs> reef system looking thing. <laughs> but it, it, it gives the place, the fish, places to hide and stuff. Um, over here, we have the, my baby stingrays. 
and there's a couple, there's a fire eel and a, uh, a spotted eel in there. And sometimes even people that get a 10 gallon tank and buy little fish end up, they want out of the hobby or something. So we take in them fish. They come over here in this 50 gallon. There's a little tire track eel, a little fire eel, some Arteti knives. There's some little baby ballast sharks, a baby uh, peacock bass. Um, just stuff that, you know, when I find somebody and, and they're big enough to where they, they're eating good, I can give these away too. This here is our pool full of just basically a bunch of different things. There's clown knives, uh, pakus, uh, we've got a bunch of Oscars, tilapia, uh, albino Oscar here. We have an albino clown knife over in that corner. He's pretty big. Um, there's a blue channel cat, a Julian's Probarbus. Um, you know, it's uh, the, this uh, sexy caution, this Oz, I had to take him out of the 4400. He was spin nipping the Arowanas. And he don't bother nobody in here, but in the, the big tank, he was bothering the Arowanas. So we had to take him out with him. Now over here are some big guys. Now I, I'm going to move him to the, the 3000 gallon at the end over there, but in the meantime, for this weekend, I left him here for the fact that there's going to be a lot of people coming for the OCA show. And this is kind of a, a neat thing, but this is Big Poppy. He's a tiger shovel nose, and he likes to be petted. You can pet him, and he'll swim away, and he'll come back and want to be petted some more. He'll do a big circle, and he'll come back. There's an iridescent shark there, a big red tail, a Niger cat. Uh, this here is Two-Face. He's a big red tail. And here comes Papa back. He wants some more. <laughs> I love it. Everybody. But well, we want to reiterate that uh, you you don't want to, like you might think this is cool watching him pet this fish, but that doesn't mean you need to just go out and try and buy one yeah, without they, having a crazy setup to be able to support it. They get really big and, and it's really rare for a fish that likes to be touched. Yeah. Um, you can have that in any kind. You might find a cichlid, you might find a flower horn, but you know eventually there's certain fish that like to be touched. It ain't all tiger shovel nose. Um, but, you know, I don't want to send out the message, everybody should, you know, get these fish. They, they actually shouldn't be sold at the pet stores because they do get so big. And the fact is that they sell them at the pet stores and there's no place that you can give these fish to. So the pet stores are basically sentencing them to death eventually. It's a matter of time. When they get this big, who's got a, you know, if you had him in a, a 150, he, he, he'd destroy your tank. He'd break it. That's why they're called tank busters. But you know, I have the facility right now to where I'm able to help for a little bit, but I'm going to get overrun eventually, and I don't know, you know, I can't even give them to the zoos or the aquariums. I've been trying. Sure. But anyways, here is our 750-gallon tank. It's for the mini monsters. Now, all these big guys are going in the 3,000. These guys here, I'm going to take out the biggest four or so and put in the 3,000 with the big guys, and the rest of them I can add some more. I've got more in the pond here I can add up here. And you got to feed them and grow them out for a while. And come on over this way. This here, he's a neat guy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this guy here, he's an Abba knife fish. Uh, some pet stores sell them as Abba Abba knives. Um, he's, he's a really neat fish, but I can't keep him in with anything. He will take bites out of other fish about the size of my thumb. They've got really sharp teeth. And if you don't kill the fish, He'll come back later, take another bite out, and eventually going to kill anything that he, he's put in with. So I, I put him in this 500 gallon, and we built a sand wa underwater waterfall there out of sand, and uh, he's pretty neat. I'm waiting for the sand to clear up. It made the water a little milky, but uh, you know it's, it's, a, it's a pretty neat setup. Then I can take all this extra filtration off of it, and it won't look so hokey. And then over here we have the 550, and it. <laughs> Anyone out there wants to get into the fish hobby, my suggestion is get your wife a tank. Get her some goldfish, some koi, something pretty, discus, cichlid tank. And once she's into it, you're free to get into your hobby. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Sure. So this is the old lady's uh, koi comet tank. 
and then I had to put some, uh, I got some South American lungfish in there um, and that were getting picked on in other tanks. So I had to put them here. And just because people will ask, you said it looks like they're starting to pick off these goldfish a little bit? Yeah, there's a goldfish back there with his head missing. Yeah. One of the, one of the uh, lungfish got him. Yeah. Okay. And uh, she was upset about it. I'm sure. I mean, a comet is 50 well, cents at no, the I know. store. Sure. But, Tracy's like, look how long their tails are. They're so beautiful. Sure. And she, she was about ready to cry when one of them was gone. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. All right, so. so uh, oh, another little hint here. See how the bottom is uh, tiles? Yeah. Uh, everybody has to do the gravel on all the tanks. Well, I have so many tanks that I try and come up with ways to make it easier to take care of. I don't have to gravel clean in this tank. I don't have to do nothing. The tiles are there, and with a bubble wall on the back wall, it keeps the water rotating so no dirt accrues on the bottom, and the filters are able to take it away. Makes life so much easier. Seriously. It don't look half bad. So should we uh, show them the big tank? Yeah, let's go around. So you guys might be thinking, what are you talking about? We've seen all these big tanks. <laughs> well, you haven't seen the biggest tank. foot long, six foot tall. It's seven foot from front to back. Uh, this is something I ran across at an auction. I didn't go there to buy this and I, I put a, a jokingly bid on this and I ended up winning it. Couldn't believe it but it was a 10 hour drive away and we had to rent a pickup truck and a car trailer to set this on and bring it home in the middle of winter. This actually sat outside my house in the snow uh, for two years. Now the guy from Water Dog Products said that if this window gets cold it would shrink more than a half an inch of 14 foot and it would pop the seams. So for two years this had a heater inside, it had a camera for my uh, house camera system, security system, and then I had a big uh, thermostat on the wall and it was this was covered with uh, uh, styrofoam and I had it shrink wrapped and covered in a tarp and then I could see inside and keep the temperature monitored. So this sat outside for two years and we bought this house. We put it in here, filled it up, and never had a problem. Talk to me about some of these fish. Okay, this here is a gold iridescent shark. We call him Schwarzenegger. Um, these are some albino pacus. These are arowana fish here. There's four of them in there. Uh, this guy here is called uh, Bert, he's well known around Ohio. He was at the uh, Aquarium Authority forever. They were trying to sell him for like $300. I ended up getting him. And then this here is, <laughs> he's got his own webpage. It was a lady that donated him to me named Kimberly. His name is Sir, Heisen, or Sir Heisenberg Von Fishface. That's <laughs> and like we said, if anybody donates fish to us that has a name, they're a family pet, we keep them here forever and let them you know, grow old and eventually meet their death here. This is where they're going to stay. That way the people can come back and visit anytime they want. So we've got a lot of fish that are named. Uh, the fish that are unnamed, I can find other homes for. We know many people through the United States that have big tanks. Uh, but like, like we got a school of Schumberki here. Them are actually silver dollars. They're wide bar silver dollars. They're mindless Schumberki. Them are the biggest I've ever seen. They, they get big. So they're, them are 15 inches, uh, 14 inches. They're, they're, they're big silver dollars. Uh, let me see what else we got here. Uh, down here in the corner. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of clown knives. Now he's he's probably about 28 inches. There's some 33 to 35 inch clown knives in the back behind this coral. And they're back there. They're, their humps are about four inches wide. They're, they're huge. I've never seen clown knives that big. But they hide all the time until, unless food comes out. Then they come out and eat and go back in there. Now, honey, can you hand me that flashlight to I have a uh, three and a half foot uh, South American lungfish in here. If I can get a picture or show him. He usually hides right back in here. No, nope, I don't see him. Yeah, 
and he comes up every 20 minutes, gets some air, and goes back down. That's a uh, Piercei cichlid. Um, then here's another Paku and an iridescent shark. These are Mashirs. There's gold and blue and what? In between the coral, let's get ready to come up. Oh, that's an alligator gar back there. I don't know why he hides, but he's back there. This is a Bunnacoperi. Um, we got long nose gars here. Oh, this is a, a thin bar. He's pretty beat up. He was uh, pretty beat up when he came in, but we got that thin bar. There's another thin bar here. There's a good, good looking thin bar. And then there's a fourth one right there. We actually bred the thin bars. And if you look over here to the thousand gallon, we have babies of them in here. Here's one here. There's like four or five in here now. It came from our our fish breeding naturally. I'm not trying to breed them, but they did breed. Okay, so let me ask you a couple questions. Yes, sir. So this tank here, how is this filtered? Um, it has a an out right there. So we pump water in on that side to that big two inch PVC pipe and the water fills up the tank and overflows out and it comes back here. We have an 800 gallon filter here. Go back in this way. I'll continue talking but you can go in that way. That is a sock table that I had Steve Shin from Aquatica build for me and it's nine, nine socks that are 100 micron a piece. So the water comes in, goes through these nine socks, and then I have four foot of house plants here taking out nitrates. Uh, and the, the bottom of this 800 gallon tub is basically a settling chamber. And you know, once a year or so, we gotta clean the bottom of this off of slough. Uh, it's about six to eight inches thick. And that keeps it from being back in our water. And then the water comes out of the end of that through this pipe here into our homemade biological filters. This is just a sock that I, I cut for to keep the splashing down. The water goes into the, it was an old garbage can that I drilled a bunch of holes in and that's full of bio balls. And then it comes out on the other side, you see the water's rippling, it comes out that way. So I had to use two garbage cans to split it up so there's too much water for one to handle. But this is biological, that's mechanical, and that's how we, we filter it. I'm getting ready, I'm gonna to have to upgrade the filtration because I've got a 2200 gallon tank outside right now with the heater in it and the cameras that we're gonna to have to move in here and we're doing an addition now to be able to you know, handle another tank because we have no room in here. So we're doing the addition, get another tank out there, so I'm gonna need more filtration. We're gonna to have to re revamp the whole thing. And uh, you know, we're trying. Yeah. Over here in this tank, Someone gave us a set of uh, breeding Jack Dempsey's. They're in the back corner there. And I just have water running from the 750 and dripping down into here. And some sponge filters in there. But they breed every, you know, so often and have a bunch of babies. And so, you know, we give away a lot of fish and help out on the smaller items. The bigger fish we keep here and basically give them a forever home. Okay. So. I won't make you uh, talk any longer. You really showed us so much, and uh, and we appreciate it. Um, let me just say, and uh, this, running something like this cannot be cheap. Um, I won't make you talk about exactly what it runs to maintain it, but um, guys, I'm going to work with Rich uh, between now and when this video comes out. Hopefully, um, we'll get some type of a way for you guys if you think what he's doing is uh, a worthy cause to donate to, which I think it definitely is. Um, it's really cool what he's doing. Uh, we're going to try and, if you look down the video description, hopefully we'll have uh, some type of a way for you to donate um, and help keep this, uh, keep this running. So um, thank you, Rich, so much for walking us around. This is really awesome. can't believe this is all just in your house here. So um, really awesome. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Until next time, have a good one.